Buenas, buenos días todos, a todos, buenos días. Good morning to all, this is Annie with Chica's Kitchen, and it's about almost 5 in the morning, it's 4.52, and I decided to make Hubster a breakfast pizza, so I'm going to go ahead and bring you along and show you how I make my pizza pie my breakfast pizza pie all right so come along okay here's what you're gonna need i use the turkey breakfast sausage you use whatever kind of meat sausage you want to use you know smoked beef sausage whatever if you eat pork whatever whatever bacon you can use bacon whatever you like as a meat, a breakfast meat, you go ahead and use that. I'm going to use the turkey breakfast sausage. This particular one, I get it at Walmart. It's pretty reasonably priced. It's under $2 a roll. But what I love about it is the spices inside. Oh, it is delicious. But anyway, so you'll need your meat, whatever you want to use. You're going to need some shredded cheese, whatever kind of cheese you want to sprinkle. You're going to need some cheese slices of either, this is smoked provolone, or uh, you can use Velveeta slices, whatever kind you want. All right, you're going to need about two tablespoons of butter. You're going to need a tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of sofrito. You're going to need some adobo to sprinkle on the eggs. You're going to need about eight eggs, okay? You're going to need about um, a tablespoon of olive oil and that's to do the eggs with and you're going to need some diced potatoes all right you can also get these in a can at walmart diced potatoes at great value and they're very delicious or you can just dice your own up but whatever you want to do your kitchen you rule all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stir fry our meat. Okay, and then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and add the potatoes to it so we can put it in the eggs together. All right, so let me go ahead and sit you down and we'll get started. Oh, and I also wanted to show you, you're going to need a pan like this. Uh, omelet pan, one that your breakfast pizza can slide out of real easy. It's got a low height from the bottom to the top, and that's what you want, okay? So make sure you have one of those. Be right back. Okay, first I'm going to just put that to a number six. I've got the sausage in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and break it up and go ahead and stir fry that. Yeah, it was a little frozen. So, go ahead and get that going. I'm going to add my sofrito to it. Okay. It's already got spices in it, so I don't need it. So I'm going to go ahead and let that stir fry. In the meantime, however, I'm going to go ahead and whisk up my eggs over here. I'm going to get some air in them to give them some lift so I want to make the omelet. Now you can use the handheld beaters or do it with the fork if you don't have one. But if you have a stand mixer... You can do it on number three. Get some air in them. Start on one. And switch to two. And then three. And that will get some good air in those eggs and fluff it up. Now, I'm not ready for them just yet, so I'm just mixing them really well right now. And then I'll give it a good one over again before I get ready to put it in the pan. To the omelet pan. Did I say omelet pan? <laughs> I meant omelet pan. Oh, it's too early in the morning for me. Where's my tea? Ah, 
right, that seems to be mixed really well. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that in there. And I'll cover that up. Put a tea cloth so nothing, nothing in the air or dust or anything gets in the eggs. I don't like that. Now, I don't allow my pets in the kitchen, or my pet, I should say. I have a service dog named Boots. I don't allow her in the kitchen. If she doesn't get past a certain point, she knows better. But, precaution. I'm very uh, particular about that. She can get up on the sofas and all that because I've got covers for all of them and they're washable. You know, you take them down and wash them and stuff like that. And, and you want to treat your animals with love and care and like part of the family. You know, they just don't do a service for you. You've got to give them some love and make them part of your family. So I've got that for the... Uh, she's got her blankets on the bed and she's got a particular side of the bed she likes to get up and snooze on and she's I've got covers for the sofas and love seats and recliners but in the kitchen there's nothing I can cover up <laughs> so she's barred yeah lifetime bar barred from my kitchen so she can't pass a certain point and she's already been trained so she knows she doesn't you know, unless I call her over to me, she will not. She will not come past a certain point. And you can train your animals to do that. I don't know about cats, though. <laughs> yeah, they got their own personality. They couldn't care less about yours or what your needs are. <laughs> oh, but I love them, too. I used to have a cat called Black Dahlia. She was a rescue. Oh, I loved her so much. Beautiful cat. She used to enjoy watching TV. Early in the morning, I'd get up to get ready for work, and i I put on the KT channel, and she would watch the Meerkats. She would watch the, uh, going with the Tigers and stuff. I can't remember all their names. Anyway, Boots could be less interested. I mean, she couldn't be, she could care less. Uh, about TV, she's not a she's not a watcher. She, it's like over her head. She's not interested. You know, she's she's just not. She's more of a hunter. She sees a bird, a squirrel, a cat, or anything. She wants she wants to take off after it. But uh, she loves to go fishing too. She likes to play with the fish. She won't bite them or anything, but she does like to play with them. For some reason, she won't do that to the fish, but she'll go after everything else, including her own kind. I don't know what's wrong with her. <laughs> She's crazy. She's loca. She's definitely loca. I feel like asking her, yeah, are you Puerto Rican? Da loca. <laughs> but anyway, all jokes aside, uh, yeah, so I, I'm very particular with hair, you know, maybe in the air or dust falling into, especially wet liquids. I don't know why, but if it's going to be sitting there, you know, and I want it at room temperature. I don't want it in the fridge. I guess I could put it in the oven. But uh, anyway, this does does it for me just to cover it up. So, I've got the meat in the sofrito stir-frying right here. I'm getting ready to add, uh, so I'm going to drain this, and I'm going to add the potatoes. I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add our potatoes in there. This is the wrong utensil. these potatoes to brown a little bit. Bit 
of olive oil just to get that little stir fried in there. Or whatever kind of oil you want. I like olive oil for the taste. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the back burner on, let's see, what do I got? I'm going to put it on a four back here and let that continue to cook back there. And we're going to go ahead and put this burner on low, low, low. Okay. Add our butto, our butter. And get that melted up in there. And you want to make sure is coated all the way around because we're um, expecting the eggs to rise up a bit so you want to coat the sides of the pan to the omelet pan too okay go ahead and get that melted up in there it is on low it's going to remain on low because you've got to cook your eggs on them. I'm gonna put the olive oil in there. Get that going. Okay. Put that out the way. Let me kind of fix this. Because we want this, uh, this omelet to slide on out, this pie, breakfast pie. You could do these in the oven, too. This is another cheese I like to use to top it off with the uh, Four C's Parmesan Romano. Grate it and shred it. It's really good. I use some of that too. And of course, chopped up uh, red peppers, onions, and green peppers. I'm going to put some of that in there. You can add whatever you want jalapenos, pepperoncinis, whatever you want want in your omelet in your breakfast pizza you can add just think it's a pizza for breakfast so it's made out of eggs instead of a bread crust um so you get some good protein there you can make it out of just egg whites you can make it out of a cauli cauliflower with egg whites um to make it together like a pie whatever you want i mean just get creative it's your kitchen but I'm going to do my with the eggs, egg whites and yolks together, the whole eggs, because that's how we roll around these parts. Hubster needs all his proteins and carbs, so that he works really hard. He's retired military, 25 years in the service, he's retired in the Army. And he works as a contract on base. Uh, or for a contract on base, I should say. Uh, very talented. He can build anything. He's done build a back deck. He's built a fire pit place. He's just just the whole thing. Uh, beds. He's done it all. I'll have to show you all one day and give you a tour. It's a small house. It's a three bedroom, two baths. But it, it, he's really done a magnificent job. I mean, digging in a hill. Our, our backyard was a steep hill. 
we have maybe this much flat ground coming out the door in the back, you know? And so the rest was a steep hill like this. And so he dug into that and he flattened that out and he put it, made a nice deck with the awning, a shaded area awning and everything. And then he built an a, a poor area for a pool. He, he got a pool and then he uh, built uh, ramps on either side of that, you know, decks on either side of that. And then uh, in the winter time, we take the pool down and then he decided to build the fireplace for Feast of Tabernacles and he put a tent right there where the pool used to be. We had tables with all kinds of foods and um, we celebrate Feast of Tabernacles, which is one of the three uh, feast days that the Lord uh, requires us to keep in remembrance and celebrate. They're called the Moradim. So we do celebrate the Moradim. There's Passover, then Pentecost, 50 days later, and then uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, there are a few others that um, the Jewish nation or people keep that they add, but they're not official Moedim. In the Bible, it actually tells you, uh, God speaking says which days to keep in remembrance. You know, besides his commandments, okay, and statutes and ordinances, except the blood ordinances, that was done away with. We don't sacrifice animals anymore because Jesus became our sacrificial lamb. But anyway, there are the three. There's the Passover. He mentions it by name. Uh, the harvest, uh, Pentecost, and... Um, then the fall harvest, the in, he calls it an ingathering. That's when you bring everyone in all, off, off the fields because it's the last harvest before the winter. And uh, it's symbolic, I think, I believe, with his second advent, with Jesus' second advent, you know, when he comes back and gathers us. But anyway... So we were celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, and we needed a fire pit. We needed to put the tent. So when we removed the, the pool, he went ahead and fixed that ground with some green lawn carpet. Lawn carpet, if I can speak. <laughs> and uh, some cement blocks, and he built a nice and benches. He built some benches out of blocks and, and some wood. And, oh, it's beautiful back there. Absolutely beautiful. He did a great job. But anyway, multi-talented man. And um, I'm pretty proud of him for that. He learned from his dad. His dad used to build houses. You know, he was handy. He was a carpenter also. And his dad's also a veteran. I think World War II veteran. And, uh, yeah, so may he rest in peace. Rest easy, warrior. But um, proud family. His sisters, military also, background. Uh, his brother-in-laws, his brothers, uh, military background. A very patriotic family to this country. I'm really proud of them, all of them. And, of course, I'm a veteran, too, United States Army. But um, not a lifer. I was not a lifer. <laughs> no. But anyway, enough of that. So he, he's retired, but he still works on base. And so, you know, he, he does a lot. He works a lot around the house and the property. And so uh, I like to make sure that he's taken care of in this end. You know what I mean? Because he does so much. He's a good penguin. <laughs> Anybody know about the male penguins? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, let me go ahead and whisk these eggs. And then we can get started on the omelet. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to whisk these bad boys in. And put it to about a four. Get some good air in there for just a couple of minutes. I don't need a timer. I'm just going to eyeball it, I guess. And this is pan over here is nice and melted with the butter you saw that. So. Just 
get some good air in there. Alright, I should do it. And gotta pull this out. to get a front row view about this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pour our eggs in there. Okay. Some water. a bad habit of throwing everything in the sink like eggshells and wrappers and stuff like I have a garbage disposal or something <laughs> and I don't I don't I don't like those I think they they draw in too many critters okay so I'm gonna stir Put this up a little bit, put it on six. Let these potatoes get a little browner before I put them on the eggs. A little bit of oil, let them fry a little bit better. Okay, we'll be over here. If you can see, it's the egg is cooking around the edges real nice and slow. That's what you want. You want to see a slow crusting at the sides of the omelet pan. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find the lid. For now, we want those eggs to cook just a little bit more. They don't have to be cooked all the way before you start adding the stuff to it, but you want it to be cooked some of the way so that your um, toppings won't go all the way to the bottom they'll be like in the middle and on the top all right 
So we can do now, sprinkle a little bit of adobo. Not a lot, just a little. Just the once over. That's it. Voila. If you like salt, go ahead. I don't add additional salt because I feel everything else has enough salt, like the cheeses and the sausage. So I don't really add any salt. As soon as this cooks some, I'll bring you right back when I get ready to add the sausage and potato. Okay, let's take a look. The sides should be bouncy. See how it just wants to move? See that? That's what you want to see. That means it has not stuck to the bottom of the pan. I hope. <laughs> you never know. I've had some real big mess ups, but if you cook it on very low heat, like I said, just leave it on low, 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 you should be okay. Now, you see that, you, that center right there, that means this is ready to have the other toppings added to it. You get in your layers. Make sure none of this is, oh, it's moving around. That's good. Okay, so we're going to turn the back of that off. And we're going to start adding. Our sausage and potatoes. Okay. Ever so gently. so hearty yes I have a big man <laughs> he's a giant I'll leave that for boots for the service dog I'll let her get a little dip a dabble okay so now you've got your meat in there Next, you want to put in your peppers, or not, you can omit, just add what you like. We like all this stuff, right here. Okay. We're going to leave it on low. We'll leave that for about five minutes. We'll be back. I'm going to set the timer. I'll be right back. All right. Timer's going off. Five minutes are up. And we have it. We're going to go ahead and... Put in our shredded cheese. Doesn't that look like a pizza kind of? <laughs> sort of. Alright. And I'll pull it on.
I got a snowflake. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Alright, so we've got that on there. Cover this up. In like three minutes, put the time on. Be right back in the meantime. That bread that I baked yesterday for Hubster. See that a little basil and garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and toast it with just slice that. See, look at that crumb. Mmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the oven to toast. While that's melting, I'll bring you right back as soon as the three minutes are up. Alright, three minutes are up. And there we have it. All that's left. To turn this off, put some Parmesan Romano cheese on top. Top it off. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of parsley flakes. Kind of makes it look pretty. See that? And there's the breakfast pizza. I'm getting ready to transfer it to that plate. Wish me luck. <laughs> Yeah, from row seat to the disaster. Alright. I went ahead and put some water on the bottom of this pan to put it in my feeder later. Alright, let's take a look and see what we got here. Yeah, we got a, we got a movable feast. See how it moves around? You gotta make sure it's gonna slide out. There we go. Slid right out. And there is, look at that. Look at that rise when you whip up that egg. There is that breakfast pizza. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs>